Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today and to welcome all of you to this uh, event. Um, we have seen already the impact of the tsunami of global shocks that have affected the continent and increased uh, fiscal vulnerabilities that the continent is facing. And we have also seen a number of initiatives that have been introduced uh, since the pandemic, including, for example, the issuance of SDR, uh, special SDRs because of the pandemic, uh, the um, suspension of debt service initiative, uh, as well as G20 common framework. However, each of these solutions have faced a number of shortcomings that affected its usefulness. And um, this has really been further complicated by the fact that the landscape for debt for the continent has really evolved over the last two decades. So we have uh, moved from uh, you know, the high reliance on uh, Paris Club uh, 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 lenders to and because also of the decline in concessional availability of concessional financing over the last two decades, that led to more reliance on commercial private debt as well as the um, you know emergence of new creditors in the landscape, particularly you know China, uh, and this has complicated this landscape in terms of existing mechanisms for debt resolution uh, and has really posed uh, serious challenges relative to what we have seen before at the earlier times when we had HIPIC, for example, and most of that debt was Paris Club debt. Uh, and really, I think your discussions today would be very relevant um, you know, to the issues that we need to work on, especially in terms of uh, data on debt, uh, uh, its uh, availability, reliability, and uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the coverage of the different components, including also taking into account, for example, issues like contingent liabilities. I've been leading work in ECA on global financial architecture reform and um, you know, through also the Africa High Level Working Group on Global Financial Architecture, which ECA serves as the secretariat, and it has the African Ministers of Finance, Economic Planning and Development, as well as the IMF, World Bank, African Union, African Development Bank and African Bank. And Issues of debt have been a core component of what we also have been discussing and what need to be reformed. And among the issues that have been discussed, for example, is the need for an overhaul of the G20 common framework to be more uh, time-bound, transparent, and efficient, and to uh, uh, you know, uh, enlarge eligibility to include middle-income countries, because we have seen, for example, in Africa, uh, middle-income countries have been particularly hit by the consequences of the war in Ukraine. Um, and also, we, uh, among the reforms that are required is having a standstill on this service upon application to that framework so that it can give countries a breathing space while this restructuring is being done. So these are among the issues, but also not only on the G20 common framework and the overhaul, but there is also a need to look more broader in terms of regulation for debt. For example, um, having uh, climate clauses and uh, force majeure clauses in debt contracts is essential. So that you know, if countries are faced with these uh, uh, such events, uh, they can have the space, they don't need to have trade-offs between actually uh, handling uh, or facing the crisis and paying their debt. Uh, so integrating these clauses uh, regularly in debt contracts would be very important, and also things like collective uh, uh, action clauses would be essential, and these have been part of the things that we've been calling for 
there has been some progress on it. Uh, we have seen um, the UK, for example, introducing or mandating that for climate clauses with the World Bank making a commitment to start to do that. But we need this to be universal so that it helps uh, um, you know, Global South and particularly African countries. Um, there has also been a, another very important uh, initiative that ECA has been uh, supporting that is related to today's discussion, which is the Sustainable Debt Coalition, which is an initiative that uh, came out of COP27 to basically form a platform that discusses the nexus between uh, debt, uh, SDG, and climate action, and how can we create the fiscal space needed to deal with these issues. Uh, and uh, the objective of the coalition is to reduce debt cost, uh, expand access to sovereign debt guarantees and blended finance, and create fiscal space for investments and a positive uh, investment outcome. So far, we have more than 22 countries that have expressed interest in the coalition. And this has the potential also to serve as a kind of, uh, in the future, a borrower club, a way in which borrower countries can uh, voice a common stance on certain issues uh, that they can also be represented at the table when these issues are done so that it's not just, you know, um, better countries can evolve into becoming part of the rulemaking rather than just rule taking. Um, I think we have a, um, you know, uh, I think a very uh, good milestone with the great new, recent news with the African Union seat in the G20. I think this is, uh, 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 you know, a great, a great uh, step forward uh, because now through the African Union seat, uh, Africa can have a voice in terms of the reforms for the G20 common framework and debt-related issues. And uh, having that voice is really critical. Um, I think it really, uh, in terms of the issues that you will be uh, discussing in, uh, um, you know, uh, in the coming sessions, uh, I hope that part of the uh, things that you will be looking at uh, would be uh, uh, very important issues of building domestic capacity. Uh, it's, uh, I cannot emphasize it enough across the value chain. It's not just in terms of uh, uh, you know, uh, having uh, availability of these data so that you can have uh, a better risk assessment meaning you know, what credit rating you get, because the better, more credible and regular information, the less there is element for discretion by rating agencies to use their judgment or to um, infer information. So uh, that would be really key. I think that's a, a building block to really reduce information asymmetry is having this information on a regular basis, uh, but also uh, for decision making, in terms of when you when you uh, when you have better and uh, available and credible data, you can have better informed decision making on whether or not to take this debt at what cost for what returns uh, to monitor how this is you know being spent or. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, the finan future financing needs. So it's very important also for decision makers to make a proper uh, uh, assessment on their needs and the use of the funding that they get. Um, and I think also it's uh, 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 really important also going forward to have these assessments um, to better inform how to um, build the resilience for future shocks. So if you have all this data on a regular basis, when you are hit, whether it's a climate shock, whether it's a pandemic, or any other global shock, you're better informed to sit at the table with the relevant information to have scenarios on what is needed and how 
you know, a country uh, uh, that sustainability uh, uh, scenarios, for example, for some countries, it's an issue of uh, the profile of their debt or the cost of their debt. Uh, so it may be more of an issue of liquidity than an issue of solvency. And it's only with data that you can show this you have the data. So when countries have high risk of the distress, high vulnerability, for them to be able to have informed discussions with creditors, uh, they cannot do it without the statistics we're talking about. This is the, you know, the basic building block that they need, and they need to develop their capacity on how they can come up with scenarios that can inform these discussions, that can show you know, under what conditions actually this is, the, their current debt is a sustainable debt. Perhaps they need just a reprofiling re or a, um, you know, some sort of support to reduce the cost of the financing. Uh, but uh, that we don't have sufficient capacity in, in many countries now to have these discussions or the, on their own, and we need to build the capacity to have that going forward. Uh, so. Uh, I think I, I look forward to uh, the outcomes of uh, your discussions and to uh, the actionables as well on how we can make sure that this taken forward to support member states. Uh, and I cannot emphasize uh, enough the importance of the things that you will be discussing these coming sessions. And I wish you, um, you know, uh, 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 fruitful deliberations. Thank you.